Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and I am Reed and this is Reed's Beauty Trip. Today it's Reed's Road Trip. Um, I am heading home, if you saw part one, from a board meeting. This I'm having a little fun with. Uh, some people would ask me some questions like, you know, what makes you you? <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we've gone from Cheyenne to Laramie. I am now going through Laramie. We are on Interstate 80. It's a straight shot. This is this is why I film it's like it's a straight shot. Interstate 80 from Cheyenne to where I live in Wyoming. We don't have to get off 80 unless I need to put gas in the car, which I filled up before I left the hotel or after I left the hotel this morning. I have the air conditioning on because I for dessert grabbed a cheesecake, which I'm taking home to my husband. Um, so the car has to stay cold, which it's not like it's really warm. Um, what you guys are compared to what you're going through right now. Um, like when I left the house yesterday morning, it was 46 degrees out. Um, then of course, by the time I got down to, um, Denver, it was almost, you know, 70, 70, 80 degrees. So it's kind of fascinating. Um, the, the temperature change, um, I did a lot of um and um and um and um and um and um. So right now we're in Laramie. It's 66 degrees out. Um, we don't have the humidity that most people have. I think Cheyenne and Laramie are more of the greener area. When we hit about Elk Mountain, it turns more of the desert that I live in, the high desert, what we call. Um, so you can see a lot of green. You can see, you know, through the window and stuff like that. Um, but it's not going to last. Uh, <laughs> sagebrushy area and the most of the green is green because of your you take care of your lawns um if you don't you have a very crispy yard <laughs> but um <sighs> wyoming i love i actually really do love wyoming i love where i live i love um i'm from i live in rock springs if you've heard of uh, you probably haven't other than on if you watch 2020 or 60 minutes i think there was something back in the 70s or 80s about a cop that shot an undercover agent in the back of this police car wasn't here didn't get part of that i moved here in 2010 so um i have fantastic friends here um i'm, a, I'm really um it i'm a um a um a um a um a but <laughs> so i do have great friends uh i'm different than a lot of them because i Uh, 
great. Wyoming's one of the only states that financially functions in the black. And I, people, I'm OCD. When I moved from Illinois and made the choice to stay in Georgia, Georgia function. I would say they functioned in the black, but the economy was whole fantastic. Um, I could work and, and, and really, I was good at selling. I was good at doing stuff like that. So I made really good money. Um, Wyoming, the economy is really good. Um, we, the rate of pay is good. Um, cost of living is higher. You would think being isolated out here, you're like, oh, it shouldn't cost much. Oh. <laughs> um, my house, the houses and stuff. Um, I live in a boom, a boom town, I guess is what you want to call it that or whatever. But um, it's not cheap. Not where I live. Um, I know other areas are the same way. It's Wyoming. If you're, if you're looking for a deal, that's <laughs> not gonna happen. Um, but okay, so Quanton. So this is a district convention. They needed a girl chaperone. So I said, sure, I will go and chaperone this event with hundreds of teenagers that aren't my own. And uh, it was awe inspiring. Watching these kids care and want to do so much stuff in their community is awe-inspiring. Um, to see 200, 300 kids all get together, discuss, they were starting what's called Project Eliminate, I believe that was the year they were starting it, um, which was to help get rid of neonatal tetanus in third world countries. So giving the moms the shots, the children, was the, you know, the babies the shots. So wiping it out by country, by country. Um, so they are raising money for this. That was one, that was their international programs. And then of course they had local programs they were also working on. So you're sitting there and, and watching these kids and this is a student run, teen run program, uh, group. Um, the Kiwanis, you know, oversee it. But on the most part, this this is all motivated by these these high schoolers. So I read them and I'm blown away. I am so impressed. I'm watching all these kids. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all the stuff that these kids could be, you know, that probably want to do and, and need this avenue. And I wanted to help. It was in my mind. I'm like, how do I help the school with this program? So I get in the elevator. I'm going up to my room, and this gentleman gets in. He's been to the pool and stuff, and, and uh, we strike up a conversation. The elevator up. His name is Carl. He is a Quanian. He was the Quanian advisor and advice case from Linwood Springs. Um, Carl is the reason I joined Colonus. He talked to me. Wonderful man. Um, and I will always give him credit for me joining and becoming a Colonus advisor for Keith was my first contact with that and he's explaining it and telling me you know you should join Kiwanis and then you can be uh, you can be you know help the kids and help build it and help build your Kiwanis club okay I didn't know anything about my Kiwanis club um, in Georgia it was kind of an all-boys club where I was at the time even though they did take in, they had started to let women join and stuff. I know that sounds bad, but, um, so Alana got a hold of the Kiwanis secretary, Miss Fran, bless her soul, and so they had me come to a meeting in the, in one of the morning meetings, which most people are like, oh my god, no, I have Kiwanis meetings at seven in the morning, that's what it is, you know? and, um, that's been the best time for us to have meetings. It's the most productive time. And so I sat there and
never will ever be able to fill that woman's shoes. That woman, she I think she was secretary for like 30 years. I mean, live and die the position. And they've always warned me, live and die this position. Fran asked for me to take over as secretary for Kalanis because I was very OCD with the key club about, you know, this program, this program had everything typed up. I had this planner, I had this, the calendar, and working with the kids and um, getting funding for the kids to do programs and stuff and really help them achieve more, which they've done fantastic. You know, you always have ups and downs and stuff. Um, and so I was sworn in as a client
this convention, district convention. I had not really interacted with Kiwanians except my own club. It was a whole different experience. <laughs> and I met a gentleman who is now governor of the Rocky Mountain District, Tim. And he is one of the only people that sat and talked to me. And um, talked about Raising Readers, which is a reading program we have here in Wyoming, which is a fantastic program for kids. It's family time. It's from basically newborn to age five. Or when you go to the doctor's office, you get a free book.
club president position. I am permanently a secretary. That's not going to change until, yeah. Um, so the president of my club voted, and then a gay who is a friend of mine from the Key Club, She's a, she was the faculty advisor for a Wyoming club. Now she's a, she's been at that, and now she's a Kiwanis advisor by the time she was a, the president of her club. And so everybody voted me in, and not, I'm like, well, as long as it's all right and it meets the guidelines, da 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 da, you know, da 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 da. Okay, I didn't think I met the guidelines, so I didn't think I could be Lieutenant Governor. Ha! <laughs> I was 
this like in Cheyenne and it happened, the man would have come and got me. Don't take that wrong. Um, he, yeah. So, we, uh, so he's coming to get me. He's calling me. He's at two miles on the opposite. The roads are stopped the, the other side because of these two semis colliding. The traffic's not moving on the other side. So he calls me. He's like, I am right around the bend. I'm like two miles, you know, just right around the corner from you and stuff. And I'm like, well, they're starting to move. Because at the time when I called him and him getting to where I was because of the weather, it hadn't backed all the way up to me yet. By the time my poor husband got, it had backed up past me around the bend. <laughs> so it was like another mile, mile and a half on the other side. Um, this is a whole nother story. Uh, so <laughs> as he's coming, police officer comes up behind me.